Nowadays, on the newspaper stalls, magazines for film fans occupy a place of honor. They give the film fan the latest film news from all over the world. They tell us all the latest Hollywood divorces, and even give us articles instructing us as to what goes on behind the scenes. But in spite of this, very few audiences know how talkies talk. Now let's take you inside the studio, and you can see for yourself. the girl singing is caught by the microphone above her head. Here is the microphone on the screen now. The shiny piece moving in the middle is a metal ribbon which is vibrated by her voice. These vibrations are turned into electrical impulses, some strong, some weak. The varying impulses go through cables along the microphone arm. They are carried away from the studio to the recording room. The electrical impulses are made much stronger by this apparatus called an amplifier. The strengthening is actually done by these valves. The electrical impulses pass from the amplifier to this camera which photographs the sound only. Inside the camera is a lamp which burns steadily. You can see it has a straight coil filament. The light from the lamp falls onto a very small mirror inside this part of the camera. Right in the center you can just see the tiny mirror like a point of light. It is supported by a very thin loop of wire which is moved by the electrical impulses which have come from the microphone. So the mirror moves as the girl sings. As the real mirror is too small to see properly, we're making a bigger one move in just the same way as a real one. As it moves, it reflects the light from the lamp through a hole cut so that it makes a beam like two triangles side by side. This queer shaped beam falls onto a narrow slit and as the mirror moves with the singer's voice, so the beam moves across the slit. Now we stop the camera to have a look. Inside the sound camera is a reel of unexposed negative film on which the sound will be photographed. It passes over a roller here. A lamp here throws a light beam via the mirror through a passage here onto the film which passes before it over a drum. 
The exposed film is taken up on this side of the camera. This is a close view of the film on the drum. Notice the tiny beam of light on the right hand side. Here is the passage through which the light beam falls onto the film. Now let's work the camera. The film unwinds and winds up steadily and smoothly as it is conveyed in front of the light passage. While the camera is running, the mirror moves and the light from the mirror goes through the slit onto the film which is very sensitive to the light. So the beam traces out this queer pattern on the film. This pattern is an exact photographic representation of the girl's voice as she sings. This is called the sound set. Now watch it again, starting up and tracing out the sound. We have enlarged the track and moved it towards the center of the film so that you can see it better. The big bulges are her loud notes. The movement of film is supplied by an electric motor which drives the camera at a speed that never varies and as a further precaution against the speed changing this flywheel smooths out any tiny defect. While we've been looking inside the camera work in the studio has been going on. Okay, Sam. Okay, camera. All right. That's all for today. Thank you. But today's work is not finished for everybody. The rolls of film from the picture camera and from the sound camera have been taken to the laboratory, where throughout the night skilled men develop these two negatives. Here is an actual sound negative. Notice how small the sound track is, only one tenth of an inch wide. It is right over near the holes on the side of the film. Here is a piece of picture negative. The sound track fits exactly into a space left at the side of the picture. When both negatives are printed together onto one positive, you get what's called a married print. That is, sound and picture on one length of film. Now it's printed onto positive, the sound track is white, and because it is white, light can get through it. Here you see a married print with loud sounds on the track. Here are medium sounds. This is the silent portion of the track. To show the film in a picture theatre, the positive is put into a projector where it appears upside down. A lamp throws a beam of light through the picture only, and a lens enlarges it and throws it onto the screen in front of the audience. This lamp projects the picture only. The sound is reproduced lower down on the projector. Here a second lamp throws a beam onto the sound track, and the white portions of the track allow the light, sometimes wide and sometimes narrow, to pass through. This varying light falls onto a photoelectric cell on the other side of the film, but does not go onto the screen. The cell turns the varying light beams into varying electrical impulses. They are carried by wire to an amplifier which strengthens it. From the amplifier, more wires carry the impulses behind the walls of the cinema. 
Finally, they reach the loudspeaker, which is hidden at the back of the screen. This vibrates in the same way as the microphone did in the studio, so reproducing the sounds the actors made. Now watch very carefully the last two scenes which are going to be thrown onto the screen. The first shows the whole married prince, picture and soundtrack, and the second shows picture with soundtrack covered as you normally see. Here comes the married prince. Yes, 